afternoon. It is November 19th, 2023. It's the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, and our liturgical year is winding down. Today we have <clears throat> the story or the parable of the talents. And oftentimes we get caught up in, well, how much is a talent? You know, what's the value of a talent? And we immediately put this monetary expectation on it. And even in the scriptures, it's there also. A talent was about 15 years of uh, laborer's salary. But there's something else there, and that's the spiritual side of it. And that's what I'd like to talk with you today about. It. You see, in, from the spiritual perspective, you and I receive talents all the time from God, but we're not necessarily aware. And the very, very first talent that you and I receive from God is the initiation into the church, baptism, first communion, confirmation. That's our first talent. What do we do with it? We are part of God's family. We are fully initiated into the family of God. So what am I doing with that talent? And we all know people who have been baptized, first communion, confirmation, and then they never darken the door of the church again. And of course, that's kind of like our person who got the one talent and buried it because of the fear fear of God. Now, what does that look like? Well, that's a different story, and I'll get to that later. But then there's the second talent that you and I get, and that's our single life. We all start off with a single life. What do we do with it? And that single life comes into play very much during our teenage years, when we struggle with our self-identity, our hormones run rampant, and we're trying to figure out, well, who exactly am I? And instead of constantly going back to, I am a child of God, we buy into our secular society's understanding of who am I. And it's like, what do I do? That's who I am. Um, how do people perceive me? That's who I am. But at the end of the day, we're God's children, and that's the only thing that's important. Do I recognize myself as a child of God, loved unconditionally, regardless of how many times I screw up? That's who I am. And as a single person, how do I live that out? Well, I strive to serve God, to love God above all things, love my neighbor. Now, for many people, the third talent they receive is married life, because most people choose that. And when the husband loves the wife and the wife loves the husband, the love that flows and is reciprocated is God made present in the world. Because the marriage is not just about the couple, it is about the community that they support through their love for one another. For myself or the sisters, for the sisters, their third talent is their consecrated life and how they live out that consecrated life within community. For myself, it was my diaconate, called to service, called to serve God's holy people. And of course, in married life, the next talent you receive is children, the blessing that God gives you. And then the question is, well, what do I do with these children as I raise them in the practice of the faith? And for sister, well, it's living out that community life and growing that community life with love of one another. For me, it was my priesthood. And then, of course, for the married person, there's grandchildren, and another talent is laid upon you. And, of course, raising grandchildren or being present to grandchildren is a whole lot different than raising and being present to your own children. I've been told many, many, many times that it's a whole lot easier to look after grandchildren than it is your own children. But I'm not too sure about that. And... I will never know. For myself, it's living out my priesthood. And this is where priests and sisters, nuns, we play a very, very important role in the life of the parish. You have the spiritual mother, you have the spiritual father. And our responsibility is to assist the people of God in growing in their faith and the love of Christ. And so you have a spiritual mother. And sister gives us an example of that living within community, that sense of unconditional love. The priest, the same thing. But at the same time, both of them are required to poke and prod, encourage, challenge us to grow in our faith. And so we have biological parents, we have spiritual parents. We have a spiritual father, we have a spiritual mother. And all of this is our talents, the gift from God. And of course, when we go back to our first talent, our baptism, our Eucharist, our confirmation, 
there again, God has given us the gifts to be able to live out all of our talents in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge, right judgment, courage, fear of the Lord, reverence, piety. And guess what? Fear of the Lord. Well, what exactly is fear of the Lord? Well, fear of the Lord is not being afraid of God. Fear of the Lord is not living up to the expectation or not fulfilling the expectation. I don't know about the rest of you, but I know when my father used to say, I am so disappointed in you, that would just knock the wind out of you. And when I stand before the power of God on Judgment Day, I do not want God to say to me, Kevin, I am so disappointed in you. I'd rather he say, well done, good and faithful servant. And not because I got it right, but because I kept trying to get it right. The reality is we fall all the time. We are tempted all the time. We strive to get it right. But it's a journey of faith. And about the time we start thinking that we've got it right, that's when we're in trouble. Because that's when pride starts coming in. If I start thinking that, oh, I'm really, really holy now. Yeah, no. That's where pride comes in. Or if I do this in the church, then I'll be very, very holy. And people will look up to me. And it's like, no, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do service with a sense of humility, with an understanding of humility. I find today in our world, pride is this insidious sin that just sort of creeps into just about everything. And even within the church, you have the people in the choir who are so prideful of how they sing and their importance in the Mass. I don't need a choir. I need a congregation. And then you have people where it's like, well, I'm a volunteer in the church, or I volunteer in the parish office, and look at me, look at me. And it's like, okay, well, wait a minute, now pride has crept in there. And that's not what God is looking for. What God is looking for, a humble, contrite heart. That God will not spurn. And of course, in our reception of the, of the Eucharist, do I come to receive with great humility? Or do I come receiving, trying to look holy? And as a priest in our world today, I'm seeing more and more of that where I'm beginning to wonder, are you receiving Jesus with humility or are you receiving Jesus trying to get people to look at you and think you're better or think you're holier? You see, the talents are there for us, but they have to be used wisely. It's like we need the fullness the five talents to ten, the two talents to four. That's what God is looking for from us. And to build and build and build on those talents. But when pride gets in the way, when we start being, you know, look at me because I have done all these things, that's when we're getting in trouble. We always have to remember, one of the most important prayers of the Mass is the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have sinned. First and foremost, always remembering that we are sinners in need of God's mercy and forgiveness. And the day that we think that we don't sin, we're in deep trouble. Because now the sin of pride has taken over. All of us are sinners in need of God's mercy and forgiveness. Sister said, one of the most important roads to holiness is going to confession regularly. Now, sisters may go months, once a week, but most, for most people, it's usually around once a month. But at the same time, if your sins are getting you down, the more often you go, the more grace you receive. And as I was reminded many, 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 many years ago, sometimes it's not that you have a whole bunch of sins, it's that you need the grace to strengthen you so you don't sin. This is our journey of faith. This is where we take those talents that God has given us, the sacraments, our life, whether it's a single life, whether it's the married life, whether it's a parent, whether it's a child. What am I doing with the talents that God has given me? How am I letting those talents multiply and grow? But always they begin with the fact that you and I are God's children loved unconditionally, just the way we are. For God created us. He knit us together in his mother's womb. He has called us by name, and we are his. 
as I was told by sister many years ago, God doesn't make crown. So when you start thinking there's something wrong with you, remember who you are. You're God's child, loved unconditionally, the way he created you. May God continue to watch over you all. It is November 19th, 2023, the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our liturgical year is winding down. Almost time to start a new year. May God keep you safe. God bless.